Today is a very exciting day, and that is because the we're going to be... Avanti West Coast service to London Euston is delayed. This train will depart in approximately 45 minutes. Ooh. Have to take a look at that in a second, because that might have been my train. Hopefully a very exciting day if I manage to make my way down to London because Aston Martin are launching or at least revealing their brand new Vantage and I'm not sure if I've touched on it on this channel I definitely have over on Instagram but this year I'm hoping to pick up my brand new car and that car will hopefully be the Aston Martin Vantage. The I've... next train at platform 4 is the 1349 London Northwestern Railway service to London Euston. I've absolutely loved my Vantage over the years. It's been five years I've had that car. I know that the new vehicle has had some quite drastic improvements on the infotainment system and the centre console. And so that in itself, with that knowledge, was enough to make me want to reinvest. I'm sure that they would have done some work on the bodywork and the silhouette of the vehicle. And like I mentioned, of course, the interior would have had quite a drastic update as well. So that is the plan of action. So we're going to jump on the train, hopefully in a second, and go and check out this brand new car. Well, we've arrived to today's location where the reveal is going to take place, the bike shed, Shoreditch. Here we have it, the brand new Aston Martin Vantage. Immediately, I can see the resemblance to the DB12 at the front of the car. However, the biggest changes, believe it or not, are actually naked to the eye. With increased output delivery with next level potency, a heavily reworked hand-built 4-litre twin-turbo V8 engine has made itself home in the new Vantage, resulting in this being the fastest in the nameplate's history, which actually dates all the way back to the 1970s. With peaks of 665 PS, which is 656 horsepower, and a colossal 800 newton meters of torque, it makes the biggest ever jump in the power and torque compared to the model it succeeds. That's an increase of 155 PS and 115 newton meters, which is huge. So with this new top speed of 202 miles per hour and all of that extra power, changes were inevitable. And so throughout, they've had to support and tame that power with a new fully adjustable launch control system, upgraded radiators, coolants, upgraded suspension and stiffening components, further boosted by new adaptive dampers. They have put on some Michelin Pilot Support S5 AML customized tires. Of course, aerodynamics and much more will all play a part in making this one drive you'll always remember. Now moving on to the exterior, standing at 30 millimeters wider than its previous model with a more muscular stance accentuated by a completely redesigned front end featuring a 38% larger grille aperture. This was also quite fundamental to allow the airflow to make sure that they could keep the car cool. The distinctive front end treatment is completed by all new automated matrix LED headlamps, which I'm very pleased about because that is a function that I do enjoy on other cars. The car now also hosts the very sleek frameless wing mirror 
mirrors and has a standard quad exhaust system with of course that beautiful duck's tail at the rear. In the cabin as mentioned the interior has had some drastic changes. The center console and infotainment system is all new with options to have Bowers and Wilkins audio, a bunch of lifestyle functions such as heated steering wheel which personally I'm very happy about. And it also has an advanced driver assistance system. Now I actually wasn't expecting this but you can also opt in for carbon fiber sports seats which offer a nice slim profile and a very sporty look which actually brings me on very nicely to my appreciation for the balance Aston do manage to strike between comfort and performance. They never fail to stay committed to excelling in all areas. Well I'm sure you'll all agree that that car is something very very special and I think I'm going to lose a lot of hours this evening playing around with the online configurator which if you're not familiar with you can go online and you can play around with all of the different colour combinations, the seats, the stitching, um, just literally customising the car exactly how you would have it and so you can get a good feel for what it is exactly you want. I'd always recommend that if you're ever going to buy anything or invest in something um, that it's always worth going and seeing it and feeling it. I think it's also part of the experience, but to configure a car online is good fun. So I'd highly suggest it. Even if you're not planning on buying one, it's good fun. So anyway, the reason why I'm sitting in my car talking to you right now, because I thought whilst we're on the subject of cars, I'm going to show you what I keep in my Vantage. Now, one thing that I want to note from the offset is the Vantage as a vehicle doesn't have a huge amount of storage capacity. It's obviously a two-seater, it's got a pretty small cabin, it's exactly what you want it to be for a sports car. But I do carry a few handy little things that I thought I would share with you. So I'm going to grab the camera and we'll take a look around and I'll show you what I've got in the car and why I've got it. <laughs> so typically where you'd have a glove compartment, there is not one. And so let's move our way to the boot first and foremost. Let's take that out. Well, here we have it, the boot space. So I always keep a towel in the boot because you never know when you're gonna get caught out. I either would use it to dry myself off, but more importantly, if I end up chucking on like a pair of wellies, for example, that I just leave in the car, because we do live in the countryside, I can lay this out and put the muddy wellies on top of it. So I tend to always keep a towel in all of our vehicles. And then in the back corner here, this is obviously my survival kit. I have a couple of bags for life. If we go shopping, I can take these out and utilize those. If you look just down by the bottom of the wellies, there are two things here which are quite abnormal to be fair. So firstly, this right here is essentially like a sticky mat, but it doesn't transfer. So you don't get the adhesive from this transfer onto your hands after, but it will stick to surfaces. So very infrequently, we'll use this to rest our cameras on whilst we stick this onto the surface of the car or on the dash, for example. So a little bit niche, I know, but very fitting for our jobs. And this right here is like a jet fan. So I use this for loads of different things. And I found it to be very convenient for kickstarting fires, but obviously that's not why I have it in my car. The reason why I have this in the car is because it's great for removing any like crumbs from the really difficult parts of the car to get access to, such as down the side of the seats. And it's also really good if you chuck some water over the car, give it a wipe down. You can also blow this on the wing mirrors and it'll clear the wing mirrors up. It's got three power settings and um, it's pretty powerful. So, It's more powerful than a hairdryer, so it is just very convenient, but it's really good if you've got crumbs down the side here, you can't get a hoover in. And just to blow it down and out into the footwell and then you can hoover it out the footwell so it's just good at clearing slightly more difficult areas that it's harder to get hoovers into a nice little tool which i guess is again quite niche but i found it to be very good this was a stocking filler which is how this came about so uh, yeah now if this didn't come with the car i definitely would leave an umbrella in the car anyway but aston martin actually supply umbrellas with their vehicles as an extra so we have this which just lives in the boot basically and it's nicely filed away up here so that is the boot complete we take a look around inside the car 
I have a hand moisturizer, which is the Elizabeth Arden eight hour cream. This is the moisturizer version. So it's not their original balm, which is greasy is not the right word, but it does transfer a fair amount because it is very thick. And so it's not really the product you'd want to put on before you grab a steering wheel. However, their eight hour cream does sink into the skin quite nicely. So you can apply this and then within a matter of minutes you're fine to touch your steering wheel and you won't transfer a load of moisturizer onto it i then have a chamois which is really handy to have if you want to wipe down the display got fingerprints or dust on it and to be honest with you this has got a um, gloss finish so again gets loads of marks on it so it's just really nice to wipe this down not that i am obsessed with cleaning or anything <laughs> And as I mentioned, the car doesn't have a huge amount of storage. So we have another door card compartment over there. And then at the back, there is almost like a little shelf. It's quite dark, but on the back, there's a little shelf. And I've currently got a pair of sunglasses that I leave. A pair of Bulgari sunglasses, just in case it does get really bright. And I want to uh, chuck on a pair of shades. I have those there. And this is the compartment really where all the storage is at. So if I open that up, you'll take a look in there. So in my center compartment, we have another stocking filler. These are a pack of mints, but they come in this really cool Aston Martin DB5 tin, which Lydia made a great suggestion. We could actually just keep the tin. And when I finished the mints, which you can see inside there, we can just replace the mints in them and keep the tin because obviously it's quite cool to have this inside the Aston. So these are from Stewart's. I'm sure Lydia just got them from online. So a nice pack of mints. These are definitely inspired by dads. I think that most dads have mints in their car and I feel like it's a generational pass down behavior. <laughs> anyway, next up, very important. I'm joking. We have lip balm. I get particularly dry lips and dry hands, so to have the moisturizer and the lip balm in the car. This is the creme de la creme of lip balms. This is uh, by Terry's Balm de Rose, which I stole from Lydia, but it's just so good. I thought, where can I stick that where she's not gonna find it? And I thought, I know, in the center console of the Aston, and I'm gonna be able to use this for myself. She's gonna watch this video and then find out and take it back. However, I've had lots of use out of that. Next up, I always leave a tenner in the car because you never know when you're going to get caught out. And I say this, but I do now have Apple Pay on my phone, which means that it is very unlikely that I will ever need my emergency tenner. But just in case I do, for any reasons to get a little bit of fuel or it's emergency cash dash. So £10 in the car, just in case. You never know when you need two pairs of sunglasses. I didn't know these were in here. <laughs> Just in case your passenger wants some sunglasses, it's always good to carry a spare pair of Ray-Bans. So I've got a second pair of glasses there. Um, again, some parking pounds. So when we're parking, we need some cash for the uh, pay and display. I have a couple of pounds always sitting in the car for that. A good old trusty pen. You never know when these can come in. It's always when you don't have a pen on you that you need a pen. So I've got one of those in the car. And this is actually really cool. A three-way charging device, USB port, and it's got the USB-C, lightning, and I never know, I just say an Android charger, but I'm sure there's a better name for it than that. So a three-way charger, which comes in very handy because I can charge my jet fan, I can charge my phone and so forth with this. Antiseptic wipes, it's amazing how often these get used. The amount of drinks that get spilled in this car, not like really badly, but just like little spillages, baby wipes are always there to sort you out. So good to have a pack of those. And then last but not least, a fragrance atomizer. I think these are fantastic. You can pick them up online. They're very inexpensive. You can put whatever fragrance you want in them. And I just love being able to have stuff like this to hand for anything that catches me off guard. So if I'm down in London and I come back home and a friend says, you know, do you want to stop off and catch up and grab some dinner? And I thought, oh, I've been running around the city all day. I feel a little bit gross. A couple of squirts of fragrance and it sets you up. So really convenient little tool. And I think that fragrance, mint, moisturizer, they're all good little things to just keep you ticking over and keep you feeling good when you're out and about. And I think confidence is key. So yes, atomizer 
always got a place in my car. And that is pretty much it. So it's not as intense as the Range Rover, which has full on kits in there. Um, I think Lydia actually once did a video on all of the stuff that she has in that car and we are fully loaded, but it has been game changing. Like the amount of times, particularly when we went to Scotland recently, I was like, oh, I could really do with X. I think at one point I asked for like a paracetamol and she had this little kit in the car which just lives there that had two paracetamols in it and I was like that is insane like you've just got everything covered and so I think that when we get the new car I think we might have to make some amendments and maybe get like a a bag and just slot it down the back of the seats because there is space down here and I think that that might be something that we have to come across but in my car right now that's what I carry. I do apologize it was a little bit dark out there I had to wait until the gentleman had finished working on the drive you may have spotted the skip they were using saws and stuff today it was very very noisy and so i didn't want to go out and start filming and just constantly have this racket coming in on the camera so it was a bit darker than i wanted it to be however i'm going to sit myself down and i'm going to get busy on that configurator let me know firstly what color combination you would go for on the car and secondly what color combination would you have a guess at Lydia and I may be going for? Nothing is set in stone at this point in time. However, there is a very likely duo <laughs> that we will be going for. And so we'll have to have a play around and have a look. But I hope you have enjoyed this week's video. And I would love to know what your thoughts are on the new car. And I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday at 5 p.m. Where Lydia and I are actually going to be doing a Q&A. Have a great rest of the week and I look forward to seeing you then. Take care. Thank you.